Uh, unit 3, day 1A. So starting a new unit, um, we're going to look at exploring exponential models. Um, so we're going to, it's a, a new type of equation. Uh, you've seen it before, you, you've seen it in Algebra 2, but uh, below an, exam, exam, an example of to see how the basic shape of the of exponential growth. So this is an old story I heard once. Um, supposedly it's true, I highly doubt it's true, but supposedly it's true. Uh, there's an old story that a jester tried to trick a king so he challenged the king that if he could make the king laugh, the king had to give him one grain of rice for the first square of a chessboard, two for the second, four grains of rice on the third, and so on. So every square of the chessboard had to give two more than the pre or double than the previous. Uh, the king, being very wealthy, agreed to the challenge, and so the jester made him laugh. And now we got to see how much grain um, does the king own owe to the jester. So just a note, there are 64 single squares on a chessboard, and there are roughly 29,000 grains of rice and a pound of rice, which I thought is extraordinary. Actually, I looked that up when I made this, but 29,000 grains of rice and a pound. Um, so if you go and buy a box of, of rice, a one pound bag or a box or whatever, it's got 29,000 grains of rice in it, roughly. Now, so how many grains of rice, we're going to use this chart here to try to predict how many grains of rice would be in the 6th square, or the 10th square, or the 20th square, and we kind of want to predict then. Um, so in the first square, there was 1. And in the next square, there's 1 times 2, or 2. Now that would be 2 to the first power. Okay? And then the next square would be 2 times 2, which would be 2 squared or four grains of rice. The next one is the previous one, four, four times two, is gonna be eight, which is the same thing as two cubed. And hopefully you're kind of seeing a pattern here. If there's eight on this square, the next one has 16 and 32. Well, that's eight times two, which is actually two to the fourth. And this one is two to the fifth. Now, how does this work to get one though? Because we got Two to the fifth, fourth, third, second, first. Is this really two to the zero power? And it is. Anything to zero power is one. Hopefully you remember that property. Anything to the zero power is one. And so on. So it looks like whatever square of rice you're looking at, if you subtract one from it and make it an exponent, you'll find the number of rice on that square. So the sixth, to answer this, the sixth one has 32 grains of rice. Okay, so not too bad count those out. Probably be annoying to count out 32 little grains of rice. So how many would the tenth square have? Remember, this was 2 to the fifth. This is going to be 2 to the 10 minus 1. Now, 2 to the 10 minus 1 is 2 to the ninth is 512. That's not too bad. I bet that king has that much rice. The 20th power would be, or uh, the 20th square would be um, 20 minus 1, so 2 to the 19th, which is 524,288. Okay, whew, that's a lot of rice. That'd take a long time to count out. So this king might get kind of upset counting all this rice out. He'd probably just have a servant do it. But so that's a few a few pounds of rice there. Um, so that, that's just a 20th square. Now what's happening here? That's going pretty fast. Going down here, how many grains of rice are on the 64th square alone? So the, the last chessboard, the, 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 the square that's going to have the most rice on it, that'd be 2 to the 64 minus 1. Type that in a calculator, and it's 9.22 times 10 to the 18th power. So that's 9, and then move the decimal 18 places. It's got a lot of zeros there. That's, a, that's just on that last square of rice. How many pounds is that? So if you divide that by 29,000, so how many pounds? That'd be 3.18 times 10 uh, to the 14th when you type in your calculator. So again, move this decimal um, 14 places. So 1, 2, and then it'd be 12 zeros after that. That's a lot of rice on that one square. So it sounds like this jester tricked the king. Okay. Now, my guess, again, this is the pounds. My guess is the king got mad and killed the jester. So for tricking him and making him look silly. Put some context behind this. 
put some context around the, the U.S. Um, the U.S. produces about 20 billion pounds of rice per year. And that would be, that would take about 15,000 years then, 15,000, almost 16,000 years um, to produce this much, this many pounds. So it would take about 16,000 years to produce enough rice to cover the last square. That's just the 64th square. Okay, so as you can see here, um, this is, exponential growth goes crazy, it goes out of control. It's faster than we can possibly comprehend in, comprehend in our minds. Um, just, you know, we think linearly, humans think linearly, so when we go exponential, you know, a lot of times we throw that word around a lot, like it's growing exponentially, well, a lot of times it's not, um, it, but it's a fun word to say, growing really fast. Um, you know, we talk about COVID, well, it spreads exponentially at the beginning. So it, as it starts out, it is exponential growth. Uh, now, as more and more people in the population have catch a virus and then become immune to it, then it slows down the rate. But at the very beginning, it is exponential. So if you, you wonder why, why are people overreacting? Why, why did countries and governments overreact? Well, they weren't overreacting. It's the virus can get out of control before we realize it's out of control. And once we say, uh-oh, it's out of control, it's too late. You know, there's it's already happening and the rate is so fast but so exponential growth is just crazy fast i bet nobody thought that you know on this question that there's no way the king could possibly give the gesture that much money because that, that's today the u.s produces 20 billion back then this king his kingdom didn't produce that much rice and that was just the last square again so now if i was going to chart this guy um the first square uh, let's see, the, the first square was 2 to the 0. So we can think of this as, this is a graph of y equals 2 to the, um, we call this x minus 1 is, uh, is ours, because we were subtracting 1 to find it. So um, if we, so the, the first one would be, um, well, if I plugged in 0, I can't plot that. That'd be at a half. We don't want to talk about half grain of rice. Um, actually, that's going to be down here, because these are twos. And then... Let's see, so if I plugged in 1, that'd be 2. If I plugged in a 2, no, I'm sorry, if I plugged in 1, that'd be 1. And if I plugged in a 2, that'd be 1 grain of rice, like 2. And if I plug in a 3, 3 minus 1 is 2 squared is 4. If you notice, this thing is just turning. It's turning fast. Now if I plug in a 4, that'd be 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. If I plugged in a 5, that'd be 2 to the 4th, which is 16. And the gap that's growing every time, you know, here it grew 1, and then it grew 2, and each one of these uses 2, and then it grew 4, and then it grew 8. It's going to keep growing faster and faster as time goes on. So it kind of makes this shape. Now notice it never goes negative, going to the left. I'm using an exponent, and if my base is positive, so here my base was 2. I, if I'm multiplying 2 by itself, any number of times, it's going to stay positive. Okay, so this will create an asymptote here at y equals 0. So it'll kind of go flat, 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 and all of a sudden it just takes off going straight up. Well, not actually straight up. It never, it keeps going to the right and going up, but that's kind of what the graphs look like. Okay, so, so on this one, let's see. We're going to graph y equals 3 to the x. So if you just think, make a t-table in your head. If I plugged in 0, 0, that would be 1. If I plugged in 1, 3 to the first power is 3. If I plugged in a 2, that would be 9. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, somewhere up in here. And it's off the chart. Now if I go backwards, if I plug in a negative 1, 3 to the negative 1 is actually 1 third. It's still a positive number. So this would be a third and then a ninth. It's going to keep getting smaller and smaller, but it's going to follow along that x-axis, and then it's going to take off like this. Okay, so my y-intercept on this, again, any y-intercept is plug in 0 and see what you get. So 0, 1, the domain, and this is true of any exponential. The domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, because it goes left forever, it goes right forever. I can plug anything in. I'm sorry, let me do this. Put in brackets, it's a totally different thing. And then the range, 
with exponentials, there is going to be an asymptote. There's going to be a horizontal asymptote. So in this one, it's from zero uh, to infinity is my range. And my asymptote there is y equals zero. Okay. Over here, one half to the x power. Well, if I plugged in a zero, anything to the zero power is one. And then if I plugged in a one, one half to the one power is a half. One half squared is a fourth. And notice it's going backwards here. It's going to keep going down, 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 down. What's going to happen as I go to the left? Well, if I plugged in negative one, negative means flip it over, so it would be the same thing as two to the first. So this is actually two. If I took one half to the negative two power, the negative means flip it over, so it would be two squared, which is four. And it's taken off going this way. Okay, so my y-intercept, again, 0, 1, same thing, 0, 1. Uh, domain, negative infinity to infinity, and my range, 0 to infinity. That's the exact same answer so far. And then the asymptote, y equals 0 down here, this guy, this flat line going around here. So they actually have the exact same answers. Two different functions have the exact same answer. Now, there are two types of exponential graphs here. Um, one, and, and if you notice A, that A right there is always going to be the initial value. Because if I plug a 0 for x, this B to the 0 is 1. So it just gets rid of it. 1 times A is A. So that is always going to be the initial value. B is the growth or decay factor. So that's going to tell you how fast it grows or decays. Now, and it's also what you're multiplying by every time. So if B is greater than 1... That means you're taking an amount and you're multiplying by something more than one, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's what makes growth. Okay, and that's how, like, you say populations grow or something, you know, how things grow, how um, a virus spreads. It's going to grow. You're going to pass on to someone else. Um, now, if, if a virus, if, if every two people, if only, if, or every two or three people, only one of them is passing on, you're going to start getting decay, and that's where you, you get control of a virus. But if every person that catches it gives it to one or more people, it's going to maintain or get um, stronger and spread. So you know, the goal of the virus is try to get as few people to pass on as possible. Now, if decay is the other direction, it gets smaller as you go. Um, and that might describe um, carbon, you know, say carbon dating. Everything that lives has carbon in it. And once you die, that carbon starts to break down and it leaves your body or leaves what was your body. Um, so it's decaying. The amount goes down um, less and less and less. So things grow and things decay. Um, they can happen exponentially. It all depends if you're multiplying by the same thing. Okay. Like when you, when you think of linear growth, it means something's being added every time. When we think of exponential growth, something's being multiplied every time. And this decay is if B is between 0 and 1. Okay. Now, if, if B is negative, that's a whole different story. Um, we, we don't really do anything with B being negative because um, we could just, yeah, it doesn't, it ends up being a, upside down and it's not, it doesn't have many life applications. It can be graphed, but it's not really applicable to real life situations. So it, basically if B is a fraction, that means you're getting a little bit of what you had previously. So if I have half of what I previously had, it's going to be getting smaller. Or if I had 70% of what I originally had, it's going to get smaller. Um, so without graphing, determine whether each function represents growth or decay. The B is what's, what's going to tell me that. Okay, so in all of these, I want to know what is the base that's being multiplied because the B is the, the growth factor. So on these, these right here are what's going to tell me. So 0 0.8, 1.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.3, those tell me exactly what's going on. If they're greater than B, it's growth. I'm sorry, if they're greater than 1, it's growth. So this is growth. That's it. If it's between 0 and 1, you know, point A is between 0 and 1, that's decay, decay, and decay. And now the, this is kind of the trickier question. Growth is easier. If it says growth, if you're taking it times 1.3, you're basically adding 30%. Cause the 1 means you keep what you had before and then 0 0.3 more. So it says find the percent increase or decrease. Well, this growth, this is 30% increase. Some people want to look at this and say, well, then that's 80% decrease. But it's not. You're, you're keeping 0.8 of what you started with, 
like maybe I start with $100 and I start multiplying by 0.8. If I multiply by 0.8, I actually lost 20%. I lost 0.2. So this would be a 20% decay. This is a 50% decay. You kept 50, you lost 50. I kept 30, that means I lost 70. So it's a 70% decrease. Okay. Hopefully you can probably remember that from algebra 2. Now write an exponential function, y equals a, b to the x for the, this graph. So I have a graph that goes through 1, 6, and through 0, 2. Um, for these kind of questions, set it up like a system of equations. Okay, so I know y equals a, b to the x. Well, plug in, here's an x, here's a y, here's another x, here's another y. So plug in x and y. So 6 equals a, b to the first, but also over here, 2 equals a, b to the zero. Well, if you ever have a zero involved, anything to the zero power is going to be 1, so that means a equals 2. So I can substitute that up here. So 6 equals 2 times b. And if I divide both sides by, whoops, by 2, b equals 3. So I've got a is 2, b is 3. I can write my function. If I know a and b are, I can write the function. So y equals a, b to the x power. If you want to check it, plug in 1. 3 to the first times 2 is 6. Plug in 0. 3 to the 0 times 2 is 2. We got the right answer. So the same thing over here. It's going to be a little bit harder because here that, that was nice. Basically, I knew what A was right off the bat. But over here, I've got x, y, x, y. So 4 equals A, B to the second. Um, 16 equals A, B to the third. And now solve one of these for A. doesn't matter which one. Just pick one. I might take the first one. I'm going to say I'm going to bring the A over. I'm sorry. I'm going to bring the B squared over. So 4 over B squared equals A into solving for a, and now substitute in for this a here. So we have 16 equals 4 over b squared, and I still got my b cubed over here. Now, if I'm multiplying, think of that as over 1, so b squared and b cubed, this would cancel out two of those. So 16 equals 4b, divided by 4, divided by 4, I got b equals 4. Now, if I want to find a, I'd plug it in up here. So I'm going to take, I'm going to plug 4 in for b, so we got 4 over 4 squared. So 4 over 16 is going to be 1 fourth. That equals a. So my answer is going to be y equals a b to the x. Okay? And so a couple of word problems. The initial value of a house is 110,000 with a depreciation factor of 5% every year. So every year the house loses 5%. They're not maintaining it. They're not keeping up on it. It's falling apart. Uh, find the value of the house after one year and then write a function for the de depreciation of the house. So after one year, I just I would take away 5% of this. Okay, so if I take away 5% of that, I'm keeping 95%. If I multiply by 95%, I get 104,000. 500. So after one year, it's going to be worth 104,500. If I want to write that function, my initial value, so my, I can say the value with respect to time, the initial value is 110,000. This is a decay factor because it is decaying. It's a losing value. But I want to put in here what I'm keeping. If I lose 5%, I'm keeping 95 to the x power. So there's my function. And I use a function to figure out after five years. So V of five. If I take that to the fifth power, put it in your calculator, it's $85,116. Okay. Then over here, the half-life. The half-life of a substance is the time it takes for half the material to decay. Arsenic has a half-life of 18 days. That's pretty fast, very fast. Um, Carbon is in the thousands of years. I forget it goes like, like 5,800 years or something like that for carbon to decay half of, its, half of it, the amount. So given a 90 milligram sample, determine how much arsenic there would be after one half-life. Well, one half-life later, um, you're going to have half of that. So if it was 90, now it's going to be 45. Two half-lives, so cut that in half again, it would be 22.5. Now I need to write an equation for the exponential decay for this. So my amount with respect to time, 
it's going to be my initial value, 90. And then my decay factor, half-life, is 0.5. But now, the time of this, I want to take a half-life every 18 days. So I'm going to take the actual number of days divided by 18. That way, if it's 18 over 18, that's one half-life. Okay, but if it's only 9 days, that'd be half of a half-life. So I want to take this to one half power. So it's going to be t over 18. Um, and then use this. So use this to determine the amount for 20 days. So A of 20 is going to equal 90. How many half-lifes is that? Well, that's 20 eighteenths of a half-life, or 10 ninths of a half-life. So I'm going to take that. That's going to be my power. Put that in the calculator, 41.6 milligrams. So 20 days is a little bit more than a half-life. So it should be half of it plus a little bit more gone. Half of it was 45 plus a little bit more, 41.6. That kind of, that, that's a reasonable answer.